and I'm going to read, I'm in the NIV, I'm going to read uh, just three verses here, uh, and, and then we'll and then we'll talk about it and, and see what the Lord has for us. Joel chapter two, uh, verses 12 through 14. And it says, even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Father God, thank you for your word. Now speak to us through your Holy Spirit um, and, and show us what you need us to see. Move me out of the way so that only you are seen, so that only you are heard. And let us leave this space and time, our time together, uh, never the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Our, 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 our title for today is, is Yet Even Now. Yet Even Now. And I get that from, from the ESV. The ESV reads, reads just a little bit differently. I, I want to read it for you uh, just, so, just so we can get a slightly not different perspective, but just hearing the same thing in, in different words. Again, Joel chapter two, verses 12 through 14. Yet, even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with, with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. And rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. What's, what's happening right here is is that God's people, the Israelites, they strayed off. God had, God had a plan for them and, and they went their own way. And, and over the course of time, uh, God, God sent different people to, to try to get them back on track. They, they had gotten off track when uh, they'd gotten off track after they got into the promised land. And, and we talked a little bit about that uh, our last time together it, it, when we were talking about Deborah and after Joshua had had died and gone on. Another generation went by They're in the promised land, but then people forgot forgot about God and, and started to stray away. So God sent them judges to help get them back on course. And every time God sent a judge, they got back on they got back on track. But when the judge died, they went right back off track. And then eventually God allowed them to have to have a king and he gave them a king. Uh, the first king was Saul and, and Saul didn't work out. And, and so God then raised up David, uh, who, who many of us are familiar with. And after David was Solomon. And then that was about that was about it. Solomon even turned away towards towards the end of his life. And then for for king after king, generation after generation, Israel had had turned away from God and had begun to, to had begun to follow after uh, after pagan gods and, and other traditions and and not living by the covenant that God had made with them. God had made promises to them and asked in return that that, that there be a certain way they that they operate, a certain way that they live their lives, and and they said they would, and then they and then they didn't. And then they tried, and then they did it again, and then they didn't. And and so God then sent prophets. God sent his prophets, and his prophets would be his his voice. Would they would speak the words of God to the people, to the king, uh, whoever whomever was in charge, uh, and 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 these prophets would would try to get people to get back on track. If you read through the prophets uh, in the Old Testament, they're all trying to get people back on track. 
Now, there are, there are good prophecies. I know nowadays we, we tend to be more familiar with the type of prophecy that, uh, that tells us that everything is going to be great or that you know, greater is coming, and, and that's all that there is. But the prophecies that we see in the Old Testament, and, and as we look at Joel and, and what the word of the Lord that, that he shares, we see that there's, there's something wrong. There's something wrong, and the promise of good is something that that comes after, that comes when when we get right. It's not just a, a promise with with no conditions. It's a promise based on based on covenant, and and we have to be in in the right place. If God promises rain, uh, then we have to be in the place that it rains when it rains in order for us to receive the rain. So so Israel had this covenant with God. They turned away from Him. God sent His prophets to alert them and say, like, one of two things can happen. Either you can receive the promises that, that I made to you, or you will receive the judgment that was never intended for you. You can either, you can either receive the promises that I made, you can receive the benefits of being in, in covenant with me, or you can experience not being in covenant with me. You, you, you can, you can like you're, you're in violation of contract right now, but you cannot, you can stay in violation of contract. And that means, that means that there'll, there will be a disconnection, disconnection, uh, or you can, you can, you can get it right. Has anybody ever received, um, and don't lie because just don't lie. Has anyone ever received a disconnect notice? I've received a disconnect notice at least once in my life, at least once. The total number of times doesn't really matter. It's not relevant to what I'm saying. But we get, you know, the, the, the company, whoever, whoever, whoever it is that is providing us with a service, uh, regardless of whether or not that service should be free for people like water and electricity, but, but we're, we're getting a service and we agreed to pay a certain amount for that service. And, uh, and part of the, the, the terms of the agreement were that we would pay at a certain time. And, and when we don't, there's, there's usually a grace period. There's a period of time where, where nothing changes, but, but we're now in, in violation. We're now no longer uh, abiding by the, the original agreement. We're not abiding by the original agreement, but the services are still being provided, right? But then if we take too long, it comes a disconnect notice. And the disconnect notice says, now look, you, th there was a payment that was due. There was a payment that was due. The payment wasn't made, but you'll notice that you're still receiving the services, right? The payment wasn't made, but you're still receiving services. But there's coming a time when we will no longer continue to render service unto you without said payment. I know, I know a lot of you have never have never seen anything like that. Never, never received a bill that's normally blue, and, and this time the this time they used red ink. That's never happened for, for some of you. I get it. That's why I'm explaining it to you. I've seen it once or twice. And and what happens is if we ignore if we ignore the disconnect notice, then there is, then services are, are, are terminated, right? Pending, pending payment. Um, the problem is, depending on what the service is, sometimes there, there's a point of, of no return. Uh, for example, uh, if you have ever paid rent uh, or, or had a mortgage to pay, there comes a time at which at which not only are they going to mess up your, your credit, so you can't live anywhere after that, but, but, but you might lose, you're going to lose your place of residence. Like you're going to be out and you can't get that place back. It, it's, it's not like, the, it's not like the cell phone where, where you, you try to make a phone call and you get redirected. That's not even in my notes. There's, and there's a whole sermon there uh, about making a call one place and getting redirected somewhere else because we haven't paid the bill. But that's not that's not what what I'm talking about. But but just the idea, the concept of, of a disconnect notice and, it, and, it, and those have a date. Those have a date. And if you've ever received one and, and you've ever uh, uh, and you've ever messed around, you found out that the date was like they were serious about that. 
Well, God is giving his people a disconnect notice. And the disconnect notice in, in this case doesn't have a date on it. Now, I, I, I perceive among us, all of us, that if we received a disconnect notice and it didn't have a date, depending on what the service was, we, we might hasten, we might hasten unto paying, unto paying, right? Because if we don't know the day, it could be a year from now, it could be five years from now, like we could get cell phone service for the next five years and never, and never have paid or tomorrow be cut off. Tomorrow we could be cut off. And what God is saying is what he talks about, what, what Joel says in, in the first chapter and, and into the second chapter leading up to where we're at. He, he says, the day of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord is coming and the day of the Lord is the day of his judgment. See, because God is God is righteous. God is holy. And, and, and because he is he is holy and he is righteous in order for him to to maintain his his justice, because he is also just in order for him to to remain just and, and have integrity within himself, then he can have no relationship with, with evil or with unholiness. So holiness is godliness and, and anything that is unholy is also ungodly. And he cannot both be God and have fellowship with ungodliness. That doesn't work. So th there's, there's a time that's coming where he, where his judgment is going to come down on that, which is ungodly on that, which is not like him. And, and, and and he's communicating this to his people and he's given them years. And when I say he's given them years, like there's debate on when, on when Joel's prophecy was recorded, like within 400 years, like a span of 400 years on when this, when Joel may have delivered this word, but there were hundreds of years before that. So, so God, although there was no date on the disconnect notice, it's been a long time. It's been, it's been a long time and, and, and God is calling for repentance. He's like, come back. The, the day is coming. The disconnect day is coming. Services will, will no longer be available. That day is coming. And you don't know what the day, you don't know when that is. And I'm not going to tell you, just know that it's coming. And I want you to come back. See, that's that's how good God is. That is his it is his nature to to want to be with us. When he created humankind, he created us in his image and his likeness and and, and placed humankind in a, in a garden that he tended. He did all of the work and his his intent was for us to be in fellowship with him for all eternity. And sin messed that up. But he, he's calling Israel to repentance. He's calling his people, come back, please come back, come back. I want you here with me. Something's going to happen. There's something happen. There's a storm a coming and I don't want you outside. I want you to, I don't want you to get caught in the rain. I don't want you. I, and, and here's the thing about rain. Uh, although technology has gotten, has gotten pretty good uh, in, in telling us like when it's supposed to rain and there's satellite uh, imagery so that we, we can see when, when the storm clouds are gonna pass over the, the city that we live in. And we can see which part of the, of the radar are showing red, like that's where it's gonna be really, really heavy. And, and now they, they can even estimate about what time it's gonna start raining. But there's no way to pinpoint exactly when it's gonna start raining. And, and um, just imagine for a moment, no umbrella outside, it's going to rain, and you are the Wicked Witch of the West, and, and water is going to destroy you. Are you, are you going to, are you going to wait to get inside? Because once it starts, once that first drop hits, you're done. Once that first drop hits, you're done. I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting to find out what time it's going to, it was going around, I'm going inside. Here in Texas, we have uh, we have hailstorms, and these these hailstorms are uh, they're plague like. Like if when you when you read the account of uh, when Moses went to Pharaoh, let my people go. One of the plagues was hail. They had a hail 
storm and it destroyed everything. Texas experiences that type of hail. It can literally total out your car. And so when when hail is is on the forecast, like it's going to storm, but there's a good chance of hail. And we're estimating that it's going to be the size of, I don't know, a golf ball or the size of a quarter or the size of a softball. And and so people move their cars into the garage because they don't they don't want to lose their car. You can you can lose your car. Nobody waits until it starts hailing. You get the car in the garage beforehand. God is calling his people back to him before the rain could come back and come back inside before before it starts raining. And, and that's where he, that's where he comes, where he says in our text in, in Joel chapter two, verse 12, even now, yet even now, yet even now, now is it, now is it, now is all we have. He keeps pleading with them. It's been time, it's been time, it's been time. He's been pleading, but now, now is it. Now is the only time that we have. Now, well, when is, when is now? Because, you know, we like to ask God questions. We like to, we like to you know, get specific. Well, what, what exactly do you mean by that, Lord? And it, because I ask those questions. You don't ask those questions. I ask those questions. And so because I ask those questions, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what, what God in, instructed me when I asked him silly questions, as opposed to just being obedient. <laughs> now is after the past. Every, after everything that's happened in the past. Every... Literally, like look look at the clock, look at the clock. Uh, uh, you're looking at a screen right now, so I imagine for for most of us there's a there's a clock in the corner. You see that time? Every time that's come before that, every time before that in the past is not now. Like, you, I don't know what you had for breakfast. Let's just say for the sake of conversation, you had some eggs and you and you made them like an adult. And so you you not that there's anything wrong with scrambled eggs. Those are adult eggs, too. But I just mean, you know, if you just crack it and put it in a skillet, there's a way to make it as an adult. And that's to, it should. When you put the fork in it, the yolk should run over. And so you have you have some some runny yolk eggs. Right. And uh, over easy. And you have some crispy bacon. It's crisp. There's no like chewy fat you got to pull out. You had some eggs that runneth over some crispy bacon. Uh, maybe you had you had some type of a breakfast bread. We're not going to get into what type you had, but it was the type that you really liked. And and you, you, you ate it and it was good. It satisfied you, didn't it? Wasn't it good? It was good. And, and then you, did, you didn't want to drink anything right after you wait a little bit, you don't brush your teeth right away after that, because after you have swallowed the last of it, it's, it's gone. And so even though you can, you can still kind of taste it, right. You can, you can taste the, the, the goodness of, of the yolk and you can take, you can feel the crispiness and saltiness of the bacon. Yeah. But that's in the past. That's not now that's not happening anymore. So we can't stay there. It's gone. You ate that. It's gone. Done deal. And in a way, it doesn't even it, it, it doesn't even matter. It's irrelevant at this point. Now it's now it's on to the next thing. Now you need to brush your teeth because if you don't, you you, you, you drink some water. It, it's time to move on from that. We can't we can't dwell on breakfast all day. And so everything or after after everything in the past is now, but also before everything that's unknown. What are you gonna have for dinner tonight? You might think you know. You might have you might have been well trained as a child, and and you all and and you have an idea of what you're having for dinner, so you've already taken it out so that it will be ready to be cooked when it's time when it's time for dinner. But uh, if you've if you've lived long enough, you've either seen or experienced where you took something out and it thawed out, but when it was it came time to prepare it, you put it back in the fridge because you ended up having you, something else came up. Maybe you went out to eat. Maybe you didn't have time. Somebody stopped by and brought you a box of cookies. I don't know. So you, we don't we don't know what's gonna happen. Everything after right now is completely unknown to us. Don't have a clue. All we have is right now. Yet even now, 
God is saying, you, you've done this, you've done this, you've done this. He's talking to the Israelites. I'm not saying, I'm not saying like you and me, I'm, we're, we're, we're still in the text. You've done this, you've done this, you've done this. And all these things have happened. He goes through and he explains all these things that, that have happened. Uh, the, let, let, let all who live in the land, this is, this is in, in, in chapter, the beginning of chapter two, let all who live in the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming is at hand. There's a, there's a day of darkness. It, he talks about even even before that that the the locusts have come and eaten all the crops. The locusts came, they, they ate all the crops, and and then whatever was left that got messed up too, and whatever was left after that that was also destroyed. Uh, the ground can't produce anything right now, and because the ground can't produce anything, even your animals are like, "Yo, what's going on? Like we ain't we don't even have anything. Like we're supposed to be eaten, but we can't we don't have anything to eat ourselves. So what you gonna do?" God is going through all of this stuff. Like this, this is all the stuff you experience, but it doesn't even matter because yet, even yet, even now, two things. Two things I want you to. I want, I want. I want us to understand that God wants us to understand that everything in the past is inaccessible. Everything in the past is inaccessible. That's why God says, "Yet, even now, even now, like." Like right now, even in the middle of everything I'm saying to you, even in the middle of everything that you're experiencing right now, even even right now, the past is inaccessible and everything in the future is unknowable, not just unknown. Like not only do we not know, but we do not possess the ability to know. And what God is saying, what God is saying here to, to his people through his prophet Joel is the day of the Lord is coming. Not only do you not know when it is, you are unable to know when it is. So yet, even now, the only, th the only things about the future that we can know are the things that God reveals. So if God said something's going to happen, then we can rest assured it's going to happen. If God said he was going to do it, then he's going to do it. But when, when we know, when we, have, when we do have access to what God has said is going to happen in the future, what God has revealed to us, then we have to act now on what God has revealed. We've got, we have to act now on what, God, on what God has revealed. And that's why, again, he says, even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and, and mourning. I mean, He's talking about repentance right here in verse 12. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me. Come back with all your heart, wholeheartedly, like fully turn back to me with fasting and weeping and mourning. Like, like we need to understand that the condition that we're coming back from is, is not a good one. But the, the past that we've been living in is, is not a good one. It's like, okay, here, now, I'm coming back. I am coming, I'm coming to you, God. I, I, let's, let's be in, in relationship. Let's get this thing right. But I realized that I messed up and everything is, everything is messed up. Everything is messed up. And so it should, be, it should be more like, though the past is inaccessible to us, though Though it is gone, the bacon, the bacon has been eaten. We, st we still have recollection of it. And, and, it, and it, st it still makes us feel some kind of way. Does it not? Are there not things from your past that still make you feel some kind of way? And not, and not even necessarily anything, anything that you or I have done, but just things that have happened, things that have occurred. Like the, the situation, it, it, even if it was just yesterday or you might have woke up on the on the wrong side of the bed and things just not right. E even coming to that, like we, we have to be when we come to God, or when we come back to God, it, it, it has to be in a way that 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 tells the truth about our current circumstances. Whether it's of our own doing or or we've been subject to to the the impact of what other people have done. We got to we got to come to if we come if we come to God lying. If we come to God lying, I'm like, oh Lord, everything is wonderful. We 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 give up the opportunity 
we give up the opportunity to access whatever it is that he might have for us. We don't get the fullness of him if we don't bring the fullness of ourselves, if we don't bring the fullness of our condition, if we don't bring the fullness of our situation, if we don't bring it all to him, then, then what's he going to do? If, if, you, if you have a car or have had a car and something went wrong with it and you, and you, you took it into the shop and I, I don't know what, what could be wrong with it. Maybe, who, who knows? But she said, no, don't. I don't need you to do a diagnostic check on my car. I just want the oil change. Just want the oil change. I hear a rattle. Something is shaking. I want an oil change, but I don't want to pay for the diagnostic check. It's rattling. I want an oil change. Listen, I'm not a mechanic, but I can tell you if it's rattling, an oil change is not going to fix it. I don't know what it is. I can't tell you how to fix it. I'll send you to Google and YouTube and a mechanic. I don't know. But if something is rattling, if something is shaking, you just, I need an oil change, maybe rotate the tires. Should be good enough. Yeah, rotate, but don't align. I don't want to pay for that either. If I don't bring the full story to the mechanic, and all I do is ask for, I just, just the oil change. I'm going to get an oil change. I'm going to get an oil change. They gonna replace the filter. They get rid of the old. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be wonderful for the for the parts that that are affected directly impacted by there being an oil change having having taken place. But that rattle is not going anywhere. And so he he says, "Return to me with your with all your heart, fasting, weeping, mourning, like." Come back with, come, come to me with the real. He says, rend your heart and not your garments. What, what, so what that means, to rend means to, means to, to tear. Like we, in, in mourning, uh, one of, one of the, the traditions, both in their culture and in other cultures, is, is, to, is to tear your garments. You may have heard of sackcloth and ashes. Uh, and so sackcloth would, would be a certain garment that you put on for the purpose of, of tearing it. But what God is saying is, don't come to me just don't come with your ceremonial grief. Don't don't come to me with your ceremonial grief. Don't 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 come don't come to me with I, I know some of y'all seen the video along year from years ago, the, the man who was about to be sentenced because he he committed a crime, he was found guilty, and he he wanted to render a song unto the judge. Um, and he said either he was sorry for what he did. That was a ceremonial sorry. But he still went to jail. God says, don't just, don't just, don't just come to me tearing your garments, your heart. He says to Israel, rend your heart, like come with, with, with a torn heart, like you're heartbroken. If you're not heart, if you're not heartbroken about, about, about the way you have violated our, our agreement, then it, then it might not work. If that disconnect notice comes and we call and 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 start to make excuses or lie, y'all didn't get the payment. I could I could have swore I seen that come out. Is the auto pay set up? Auto pay is set up and you still didn't get it. Knowing full well wasn't enough money in the account to clear that payment. You you it was one hundred fifteen dollars and you had eighty five and. And so, sure, auto pay might have been set up, but is it, it wasn't there? It wasn't that you knew it wasn't there, and and so we like to play. We like to play. We like to play. Don't play. He said, "Don't play with me." Like, come knowing, like, yes, I owe. It was one hundred fifteen dollars. I owe you one hundred fifteen dollars, and I'll pay the un the unnecessary processing fee for you to take my payment. That's. We'll, we'll have a financial class to talk about how ridiculous that is. But, he, but he, he goes on, return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate. Now, see, this, this touches on, on Jonah. This, this, touches on, this touches on Jonah. You remember from a few weeks back, and Jonah didn't want to go to the Ninevites, uh, the Ninevites who were, were part, that was a city in, in Assyria, and in this exile that, that is being discussed in, here in this prophecy is... Is, is to those, those same those same people and Jonah didn't want to he didn't want to go preach to them he didn't want to go tell them and forewarn them of of what God had said about repenting because he knew I knew 
we were like this. And the way he knew is because he he was he was a raggedy person from raggedy people who who constantly had to come back to God. But, but God expressed this all the way back in, in, in Deuteronomy, and, and it says it again here. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. He, he, he don't want to. He didn't intend. He didn't intend for us to experience destruction. He didn't intend for us to experience calamity. He didn't in, intend for us to experience the consequences from things that he didn't. It was not in his will for us to do. That's that's not for us. And, and a lot of the things that we experience in life are are, just, are natural consequences. Natural consequences for things that we shouldn't have done, things that we shouldn't have been a part of, or or, or things that we were subjected to that weren't they weren't supposed to happen. That wasn't God's. That was not God's in, intent. But but then it says, who knows? He may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing. Grain offerings and drink offerings. The reason that's significant is because they didn't have anything. Remember, everything had been destroyed. There's, there's nothing left. But God, if, 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 you, if we repent, then who knows? Maybe God, if we repent, maybe God will relent. Maybe he, maybe we'll have another chance, like he, like he said that we would. He's calling us back. So maybe he'll give us another chance. And not only will he give us another chance to come back to him, but he'll 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 he will restore and redeem so much to the point that we'll have something to give back to him. I ain't even got nothing, look, I ain't even got nothing to give to God right now because I don't even have nothing. But, but those are two things that God can do, and he, that He says He would do. If you keep on reading further, God will restore. God will redeem. He'll restore what has been lost. And it literally says that, that all the crops that you lost, I will restore them to you. So everything that you've lost, I, God says, I'll give, I will give you all back pay for everything that you lost during your season of loss. And, and then I will redeem the time. It will have, it will be as though you did not lose any time. I, I can give you back pay and make it like you never lost that time. This is, this is so good to me. Let's go. I want you to grab your Bible again. Let's go to, to 2 Peter. Let's go to let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3. And, and, and Peter makes this, this same point. He brings this up again hundreds of years later. 2 Peter chapter 3. And, and let's look at verses, verses 8 and, and 9. Again, I'm, I'm in the NIV. It says, Peter says, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you and not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Not in my notes, but I got to mention this. This idea that that God does not want everybody to come to him. And there's some people that he created them just for the purpose to destroy them it goes against what this says right here. Yes, there, there, there are those who have been created, created for destruction. Uh, he's not talking about people. Right here, it says, Peter, who walked with Jesus, him and Jesus were like homeboys. He, he says that God is not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And, and where, in, in verse eight, where he says, you know, a day is, is like a thousand years, thousand years like a day. He's talking about the day of the Lord. Let's go up real quick to verse seven. By, by the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and, and destruction of the ungodly the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is coming. And it may have, it may have been a long time. Whatever, whatever you're experiencing right now, it probably feels like it, it, like God has taken forever. 
How, how like, like the psalmist said, how long, O oh Lord? Jesus even said it. When, it, when the disciples weren't, weren't operating with enough faith, how long do I got to stay with this faithless generation? Me have mercy. Like, how long? Well, God sits outside of time. But he says he'll redeem the time. And whatever, whatever, whatever is lost, like he said in Joel, he is able to, to restore. He is able to make, to, to, to make full restitution. Not like he owes us anything. But he says, if you, if you come back, imagine <clears throat> for everyone who's at a job, has anybody ever quit a job? Yes. Okay. Everybody's quit. Everybody has, if you've had a job, then you've, you, <laughs> you've quit a job. But then imagine if like they called you back, you'd been gone for like three months and you couldn't find nothing else because you quit too soon. And they say, come back, come back and the HR records are going to, it's not going to show that there was ever a break. We're going to redeem the time like you weren't gone. And we're going to pay you for those three months, even though you weren't here. <laughs> God is, God is something else, ain't he? But verse nine, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promises. He's, God's not slow. He's waiting. He's not slow. He's waiting. And, and, and see this this message like it, it feels to me it feels like it's like like it's hard but but listen listen to this 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 is this is what makes it not only not hard but 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 gratifying something that we can we can be joyful in the, the most important aspect of our lives is our relationship and our standing with God it's our relationship and our standing with God. And so if he can restore and redeem the very most important aspect of our lives, which is our relationship with him and where we stand with him, then he can do the same for any area of our life, any area. Now, I'm not telling you what he's going to do in your life because he ain't tell me, he ain't, he ain't tell me to come tell you that. But but it could be it could be the job situation that for so long just hasn't been getting any better. It could be it could be a relationship that for so long just, it's just not getting any better. It's just taken from me for all this time. It it, it, it could be uh, it, it could be a business idea or or maybe you know, maybe something you've been writing. Uh, that, you know I've I've got some stuff that I've that I've written um, that's pretty close to being ready for to be published and it's it's not and it's been over a year but but it, it's, it's it's been some time with, with this with this project this gift that god gave me uh, to, to to put to paper it, it could be it could just be with money like man i've been doing everything i've been trying to do everything right and stuff just keep happening i, to, I told the mechanic everything that was wrong with the car and get everything fixed and then something else break and i try to save a little money but then something else come up and then this happened and then it's just like you, you ever experienced that just like one thing after another. If, if God is concerned about the most important aspect of our lives, which is us being in relationship with him, then everything else, like, of course he could do that. I forgot that. I, I can make it right. That's why, that's why, and this is something that my, my wife has taught me and, and, and helped me to grow in. And that is, that's dr dreaming out loud. I know some of you are like me, where uh, I've got a tendency not to dream out loud, not to share vision out loud, because now it's something that if I say it out loud and somebody hears me, now I've created an expectation and I could fail or someone could sabotage it. Ain't nobody sabotaging what we could do except for us. But God, because he's able to restore what's been lost and, and redeem time that, that may have been wasted or, or just seems like nothing could go right, he's able to do the exact same thing in other areas of our life. So it's about our salvation. It's about our relationship with him. But it's also about our living 
It's about the stuff that we, it's about the stuff we got going on. It, it's about listen. Many many of you know that uh, that we have our house on the market. Well, it's been on the market. It's been on the market for a minute. And at first, some folks came came to look at it, and then it's been it's been silent. It even got to the point where we were where I stopped keeping my office neat, you know, because when your house is on the market, you got to be ready for people to come look at it. And so you keep your house a certain way because people need to see, you know, people need to see the, the space in a in this the pretend way. Not everybody keeps their place clean. Most people, most of us got a little something laying around, but we want to see it looking perfect. It had been so long since anybody had asked to come to come see. I got, I got, it's, it's, it's stuff where, where it don't need to be. But just this last week, I, I, I'm late to so my wife already said, I started packing. Yeah, put some stuff in some boxes. Because if God, if God, can, if God is, is able and is willing to, re, to restore what's been lost, let's, let, let's say, let, let's say we had to, you know, signed an updated agreement to lower the price that our house was listed at. He's able to redeem that. So I ain't worried about it. If he don't, he don't. But, he, but I know he got it. Like if he's able to redeem me, oh, ain't nothing he can't handle. I'm worried about all of this time, all of this time that it's taken. Start packing. Just three quick things, and, and then we're done. So, some application: that How? What do we? What do we? What do we do with this? This is like this is great information, but 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 now what? Let's drop down a little further in in Second Peter chapter three. There's there's three things. There's there's our condition. There's our peace, and there's our balance. Our condition, our peace, our balance. Verse Second uh, Peter three verse fourteen. So then, dear friends. Since you are looking forward to this, the, the day that's coming, because Peter says, look forward to it. Since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless and blameless. Another translation says to, to be in spotless and, and without wrinkle, in, in, in perfect condition. We need to be concerned about being in the best possible condition. Now, we can't make ourselves perfect. We cannot. But, but we should have some concern for our condition. And, and, and so as far as our condition, what is, what is the condition? What's the condition of your life? What's the condition of your, of, of, of your finances? What's the condition of your health? What's the condition of, of your relationship with God? What's the condition of, of, uh, of your quiet time that you promised that you, that you were going to do? What's the condition of your journaling? What's the condition, what's the condition of your mental health? What's the condition of your relationship with your therapist? Do you have do you have uh, do you have a therapist that you claim to have a relationship with? What, what what's the condition of that? What's the condition? What's the condition of your living space? What, does does your living space look like it's ready for someone to come in and look at it and see themselves living there? But, but does it does it does it look does my heart look like I'm ready like I'm ready for Jesus to come? With our condition, we need to to have some care and concern for our condition. So let's take inventory of our of our conditions. Uh, let's take inventory of our conditions this week. And then the, the next thing it says at the end of verse 14, and at peace with him. The ESV says, it simply says, our peace. Let's, let's take a look. What is, what is the condition of our peace? Do we have peace? What, what are we doing to preserve peace? What are we doing to be at peace with others? What are we doing to be at peace with, with God? What, 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 what am I doing? What am I doing to be at peace in my financial situation? Well, 
Look at it. The, sometimes, and I'm guilty of this, so I'm not going to say it's y'all. I'm guilty of this. I don't like looking at my credit report sometimes. When I know things ain't right, I, don't, I get the alerts like, yeah, there's been a change to your credit. I don't want to see that. But see, because I don't know what it is, there can be no peace. So if I look at it and my credit is 300, it's not 300, but but if I look at it as 300, why well, can I have peace? Now I know what it is. If I look at it, it's like, oh, oh that, that, that change, it, it went up. I can have peace. I can have peace because, because I, I followed through and, and I went and I explored, I, I assessed the condition. That's the only way that peace can happen. The only way that we can preserve our peace is, is, is to is to is to follow through is to have some completion on some things. Like, I don't know. I don't know when I'm pay, I don't know when I'm gonna pay that bill. I don't know when I'm gonna get to that. But you know what I could do? I could call the folks and let them know. Look, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know when you're gonna get your money. <laughs> and if, if it's a student loan payment, I can tell you right now. But but there's a, there's other stuff and, and we we can be I can be at peace with that. I can be at peace. I'm just going to talk about myself. I don't know what it is for you. I can be at peace. I got so many unread text messages. I could be at peace by going through and responding. And just I didn't respond. I saw your text message and I forgot. And, I, and time went on and this scrolled down. And it was so far down. Look, I didn't respond to you when you text. I saw it when it came through and I decided, oh, I'm going to respond to that later. And with my brain, that's not going to happen. But I can be at peace with that instead of like, oh, gosh, when they're going to call me back? Oh, they're going to text me again. And then they're going to see that I never text them back. Uh, uh, rather than having that anxiety, I'm just texting. But like, I missed the date. I missed the deadline. Or uh, I, I saw that you I saw that you asked if I was coming and I, I'm not going to be there. I, and I promise you I'm not being petty. And if you think I'm being petty, it's just because you know what I'm talking about. RSVP. I believe it's respond as if we play. If my French is bad, don't worry about it. If you don't know if my French is bad, it's good. R respond. Are you going to be there? Yes or no? You, you trying to bring somebody with you? Let us know. Sometimes we have a tendency to just like they're going to know. They're going to know that that they're going to know I'm there. They're going to they're going to know I'm coming when they see me there. Just respond. Be at peace with be at peace with that. And and. And if you can't make it, just follow up and be like, hey, I said I was going to be there. Not. Nah, it's not going to happen. Found something else I wanted to do. I made my bed and I'm not going to be there. The, and then the final thing, let's drop down to verse 17. So we, we, need to, we need to take inventory of the condition. We need to analyze the condition of the, the different things that we've got in our life. We need, to, we need to take a look at the peace that we have. Is there peace? In the condition, can we be at peace with the current condition of the things in our life? And then finally, balance. Verse 17, therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error and the lawless and fall from your secure position. I want to read, I want to read this to you out of the ESV because it it, it makes the point. It makes the point so clear. And I want to make sure that we get it. I just want to be sure that we get it. In the ESV, therefore, you therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. I like the way the ESV says it better, don't you? It's a, it's a little, it's a little more, a little more clearer. Take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. Sounds like another thing that we need, to, we need to check the condition of our relationships. Who? Who, who is influencing us? What are we allowing to influence us? Like, yeah, I could be good over here, but it says take care that you're not carried away with, with other people's error. So when, we, so when we see other people's error, we need to take care that we don't get caught up 
in their error and thereby lose our own stability, lose our own balance. Like I'm barely, I'm barely hanging on in this area as it is. I'm trying to balance everything as it is. And if you yank me over there with, with your imbalanced self, I'm a fall over too. And so our condition, our peace, our stability, our balance, as, as much as we are able, this is talking about influence because I, I realized like me, myself personally, by myself, unstable, unstable in all my ways. This is talking about influence. Like I, my, my stability is already suspect. I don't need any help. I can do bad all. We, we, we need to take care since we already know, we already know what's gonna happen. We already know what's coming. And we've already looked at the, these, the condition of things and, and we, have, we have taken analysis of our peace and done what we can to preserve our peace and thereby be at peace with God. And now that, look, now that these things are coming together and these, these things are getting together, I, we, need to, we need to be mindful of, of the influences so that we can preserve our stability. The little stability we got because look, some days we'd be hanging on by a thread. We need to be mindful of this influence, of, of, this, of the influence that other people have. Again, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose what little stability you got. But in doing so, in doing so, God desires to restore what has been lost. He's able to make it as though time was never lost, never passed, so that we might experience and enjoy the fullness of, of being in relationship with him. Not just now, but in all eternity. And if he's gonna, and if he's concerned about that, if he's concerned about our eternity, if he's concerned about my soul, if he's concerned ab about making sure that I am made whole in the areas where where I have lost as a result of being away from him, it, as result in the time that I've lost as a result of of doing things my own way, then all this other stuff in my life, he can handle that too. Let's pray. God, thank you.